Good morning, Rainbow. Have you ever wondered, why doesn't God just eliminate all of the hardships and, and the heartache of this life? It's not that we blame Him for what's going on right now, but we wonder deep down, why doesn't He just eliminate it? Why doesn't He just fix it and make it all go away? Because we know, we, we believe that he has the power to, that he could. So why doesn't he? I think, I think that it's because some suffering and some heartache in this life is, is necessary for us to grow. It's necessary for us to become the men and women of God that he wants us to become. You see, suffering in and of itself can bring about some, well, tremendous blessings in our life if we'll allow them to. And one of the blessings is just a, well, a deeper, deeper understanding, appreciation, if you will, for God and, and what He can do for us in this life. You see, you cannot understand the, the peace of God, that, that peace that passes all understanding until you've been through a storm. You can't really understand the, the comfort of God until you've experienced some great loss. You really can't begin to know the, the assurance of how faithful our God is until you've stared into a, a very bleak future. We also find that, that with these difficult, challenging times, well, it gives us an opportunity for our faith to truly begin to, to grow and to develop the way that we need it to, and more importantly, the way that God wants it to. We see in James chapter 1, there beginning in verse 2, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Let endurance have its perfect result, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. As we face this pandemic and all that comes with it, lean economic times, uncertainty, anxiousness, sickness, potentially death, the grief and the sorrow that comes with it all. Throughout all of these things, we can persevere. We see in Romans chapter 5, there in verse 3, not only this, but we also exalt in our tribulations, knowing the tribulation brings about perseverance. So perseverance then is absolutely necessary for us to become who God wants us to be. But our world our world values quick results over perseverance. That's why people are oftentimes drawn to get-rich-quick schemes like money pyramids uh, or the lottery. Uh, it's why the fast food industry took over for cooking at home a, a long time ago. But, but perseverance has the long run in mind. Perseverance says, I'm willing to commit myself to something something that, that I may never see in my lifetime, and I'm okay with that. I'm going to stick it out. I'm going to see it through. In 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning in verse 6, it says, In this you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you've been distressed by various trials, that the proof of your faith, being more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Faith is more precious than gold. Why? It's because when we stand before God, all of our material possessions of this life, all of the things that we so often we hold so near and dear, all of those things will be gone. But who we are spiritually, that's something no one can ever take away from us. That we will have for all eternity. 
And God, in His infinite wisdom, He understands that a a perfected faith is far more valuable for us in the long run than simply protecting us from all of the hardships of this life. 2020 has been a hard year. I know that sounds at this point like an understatement, but, but Lord willing, Lord willing, we'll get through this storm as we have every other storm. And when we come out of it on the other side, we will be able to see that our faith, our faith is, is far more refined, far more useful, far more valuable than what it was before because we persevered. Now, as we persevere, Let's make sure that we do it with a proper attitude, not with an attitude of denial, where we act like we're okay and everything's just fine and and we're not hurting, because that's not the truth. We are hurting. We're all hurting. We're afraid. We're overwhelmed. So don't downplay those feelings. Those are real. They're genuine. But also, Don't go about persevering by complaining. Don't go through this moaning and groaning as though you're the only one hurting because you're not. We're all in this together. So how should we persevere? With an attitude of thanksgiving and gratitude. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, it says beginning in verse 16, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. If there has ever been a time for this passage to be at the forefront of our hearts and of our minds and and flowing freely from our lips, surely it's now. As a matter of fact, would you repeat that passage with me? Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. This is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. If anything can bring a family together, it's going through tough times. Whenever a family goes through hard times, oftentimes that family will will bond. They'll strengthen as a result of the tough time. And that's just as true of our spiritual family as it is our physical family. Have you ever wondered why God chose to establish His church at such a challenging time in life when there was so much persecution? I believe it's because God knew that the greatest way for a a group of strangers to come together and, and to become family would be to allow them to suffer with one another. And by suffering with one another, it forced them together and it forced them to rally behind one another. In Acts chapter 2, you see a group of people who many at one point would have been strangers. And now they have come together through the blood of Jesus and become family. In Acts chapter 2, we read beginning in verse 44, All those who had believed were together and had all things in common. And they began selling their property and possessions and were sharing them with all as anyone might have need. And day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, they were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord was adding to their number day by day those who were being saved. Do you get the picture? You know, this isn't a group of acquaintances who just were coming together for an hour or two every week to worship God under the same roof. This is a family, a spiritual family, and they're living life together in the face of some very, very challenging times. And here we are, all those years later, the family of God going through some very challenging times. So may this be a time where we find ourselves loving one another, praying for one another, serving one another as best we can, as Christ would have us to. We live in a time 
where people need hope. They need the hope that somehow, some way, everything's going to be okay. As a child of God's, we persevere through the storm because we have hope. And our hope is based on the fact that Jesus Christ was resurrected from the grave. And because he was resurrected from the grave by the, through the power of God, we have hope knowing that this world, this world's not our home. And that no matter how bad things may get here, we know that that which is waiting for us in life everlasting is so much better. Church, do you have the hope that God would want you to have? Are you persevering through the storm so that your faith is becoming stronger? I know that we're here together virtually, not collectively the way that we so enjoy and, and need to be and want to be. But if there are things in your life, things that you would like for us to be praying for you about, we would be honored to do that. Call us. Call our shepherds. Call me. Call Justin. Call Dave. Call one another. Seek those prayers that we all need as we go through this challenging time. Or maybe you're someone, I don't know, maybe you're someone who's never obeyed the gospel of Christ. You don't have this hope because you've never begun this relationship with our Lord. Maybe you've never been baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. Listen, even through this pandemic, there is water in our baptistry. <laughs> And if you would need to respond to that and obey that gospel and be baptized, just call us. We'll be glad to talk to you about your soul salvation and make any arrangements that we can make to help add you to the body of Christ so that you can obey his sweet gospel. We love you, Rainbow. We love all of you who may be watching today. And we're going to get through this storm as we persevere. Let's go to our Father in prayer together. Our Father God, we humbly bow before you. Thank you so much for this opportunity to worship you. We pray, Father, that you would give us the strength that we need to persevere. Help us, Lord, to lean on you. Help us to, to not be so dependent upon ourselves, upon our own understanding of the circumstances that we are currently facing, but help us to lean, lean completely on you. We pray, Father, that as we strive to persevere, we pray, Father, that our faith, that you would just continue to mold us and shape us and refine us. Help us to be who you've called us to be. Help us to grow even in the midst of this very challenging circumstance. Father, our prayers continue to go up for, for this pandemic that is affecting not only our nation, but this globe. Father, we pray that a, a solution be found. We pray that you would be with those who are sick, who are infected with it. We pray your healing hand be upon them. We pray for those who have lost loved ones as a result of this. And God, we pray for the doctors and nurses who continue to, to fight this fight. We pray that you would give them strength as they are truly on the front lines. Lord, we love you. And we know that the love you have for us is even greater. And we know that it is a love that no one can take from us. And we pray, Father, that you would just continue to shower your blessings on us. Even in this difficult time. All this we ask in Jesus' most precious and holy name. Amen. Thank you for joining us online for worship this morning. 
Many of you have been asking us how to get your contribution check to the church. Because of a statewide shelter in place that went into effect yesterday, there are two easy ways you can do that. First is through the mail. You can find the address to the church building below. Second is online. You can go to rainbowchurchofchrist.org slash give to find an easy way to give online. It may be strange to worship God in this way, but we can always find a way to praise Him in any situation. If you're unfamiliar with the Rainbow Church of Christ, I would encourage you to go to rainbowchurchofchrist.org to find out more information about us. I hope everyone has a good week, and we look forward to seeing you Wednesday for our Bible study.